Bo Beatty here with Lava Life. Thanks for joining us on another episode. Today we're going to be cutting teeth. We're going to show you how to do it, the tools that you need to do it, and then talk a little bit about the teeth themselves and how that process works with llamas. So hopefully you find it helpful. Thanks for joining us. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so as far as uh, equipment and tools that you need, a few things, the most important part you need is some OB wire. And the wire is what we actually use to cut the teeth. This is the cutting tool. So you need some of this, and we're gonna put a description below where you can buy all the tools. You need some pliers, um, some snippers to be able to cut the wire that you need. And then I like to use leather gloves because I like to wrap the wire around my hands. If you don't wanna use leather gloves, you can get these handles. And the wire goes inside the handles, and then you have two handles to be able to saw and use the wire. And so that's pretty much all the tools that you need. I highly recommend having a restraint chute of some kind. Um, we build them here. If you guys want some, we can custom build them for you. You can find them online a lot of times, and it's much safer for your animal if you have a restraint chute. It's easier to do, and almost always you gotta have two people. So Kirsten's gonna help me today um, in cutting the llama teeth. So that's basically what you need. And we're also gonna show you, and if you're in a bind, have to cut llama teeth, and you don't have a restraint chute, we're gonna show you kind of a method that you can use in a worst case scenario if you don't have a restraint chute. So hopefully you find it helpful, and now we'll go ahead and talk about the next step. So the third kind of step is understanding a little bit about llama teeth. And so we're not gonna actually be floating any of the molars or any of the front teeth. We're gonna be focused today primarily on fighting teeth. Yeah, llamas have fighting teeth if you don't know that. And believe it or not, both the males and females typically will get fighting teeth. I've seen llamas that don't have fighting teeth, but it's pretty rare. And I've seen females that typically don't ever rupture them past the gum line. And so tip typically llamas will have two fighting teeth on the top on one side, two fighting teeth on the top on the other side, and then one on the bottom. And so we're gonna go ahead and show you the different fighting teeth that they have. And this is a female here, so her fighting teeth, they've come through and I noticed that they're starting to bother her a little bit, and almost never do we trim the fighting teeth on our females, only when they need it. And so we inspect them once or twice a year just to make sure that everything's normal with their teeth and with their mouth, their tongues, things like that. And often we'll find uh, that the females um, are totally fine. And every once in a while we'll see a female that looks like she's getting some irritation. And you can see the irritation when they have a little bit of redness around the tooth or the tongue. And so if you watch them and you see that, then kind of continue to watch your female and see if those teeth are irritating her. And if they are, then it's time to get them cut. So Catherine here, it's time to get hers cut. And I think it's impeding her ability to um, chew properly. Now she's getting older, and so I think it's just time to cut this old teeth, uh, fighting teeth for her health not because she's going to go and injure any of the llamas from fighting. When you're dealing with males, and either gelded or, or intact males, studs or sires usually called, what happens is their teeth are going to rupture somewhere between 18 months and three and a half years old. We have a three-year-old right now, a male, that does not have any fighting teeth. And I'm like, come on, what are they going to come? And he's a big, strong male and just doesn't have them yet. And we have males out here that are nine months old, and you can see a little bit of, of their nubs coming through the gum line. So you just really never know. And typically on the males, we almost always, always cut them. And the reason is, is because they can severely injure each other. If you have llamas and they're males, you'll notice in the same, if they're in the same pasture, they'll fight and wrestle and neck wrestle and chest bump. And um, in the wild, they use those fighting teeth as a way to uh, assert dominance and also to injure other males so that they become the dominant breeding male. And so they can really injure each other, if not kill each other with those fighting teeth. So it's really important that you always have them trimmed properly. And so we're gonna show you how to do that today. On young males, when you see them rupture the gum line, for quite a while after they rupture six months to a year, there's not enough there to cut. And they're not sharp enough or above the gum line that if they got in a fight, they could do any damage. And so you wanna make sure that you have enough to cut with the OB wire before you actually go and cut them so they don't injure the llama. And so um, it's kind of a fine line. We typically will do all the males uh, around uh, three times a year when they're growing. And say 18 month old male doesn't have enough to cut, at 24 months he might. And so we'll cut what he has there. Maybe only two out of the six teeth need to be trimmed at 24 months. And so then we'll check again another three or four months or six months down the road and maybe the two more out of the six need to be trimmed. And so as the young males are growing, it's important to frequently 
go and look at their fighting teeth and make sure that you're staying on top of it. And then once they reach adulthood, they should all their teeth should have grown up and their, their fighting teeth um, <clears throat> as they mature and you need to be able to go and trim all those. And then typically once the males reach seven, eight, nine years old, um, all their fighting teeth are through the rupture of the gum line and they're thick and they're stout and you only need to cut them typically every two, maybe three years as they continue to grow. And so those fighting teeth will continue to grow up until they reach their teens or sometimes they stop growing. So it just kind of depends. So just check frequently. I would say every four to six months on especially your growing males one to five years old. Check the fighting teeth frequently to make sure that you're not having any injuries in the pasture. If you look at some of our males, look closely. Uh, every once in a while they'll grab each other's ears or their butts or their legs and there'll be an old little scar where we missed one of the three-year-olds and the tooth came through and he fought with the big guys and sniffed one of those ears. And so we're pretty adamant um, about doing it frequently but you just never know when a tooth's going to grow really fast and they start fighting and they get in the perfect situation and the llama gets injured. So again, it's just really important to check as frequently as possible on your growing um, and juvenile males. So this is a female here, so we're going to bring her in and uh, to the restraint chute and I'm going to call Kirsten over and then we're going to get everything set up and we're going to get her taken care of. Okay, so this is a brand new roll of OB wire. It's a pretty small little strand of wire and every, t every tooth Every llama I like to get a new piece of wire. Sometimes I use two pieces of wire on one llama. And so a strand about five feet, and then I'll cut it. And then I'll get another one ready. Because once we get them in the chute, I don't want to waste any time. I want to get them in and get them out so they're not very stressed. So now I've got two five foot strands or so. I'm gonna put on my gloves. And now I'm ready. Um, and I like to wrap this around my fingers. So I'm gonna put the strand right there. I'm gonna wrap it around my finger once, go in between my fingers, and then around again. And then I'll do that on this side. Go around my fingers uh, twice, through my fingers and around. And that's about all I need. About 12 inches, and then I'll We'll kind of, I'll take it in there with my thumb like this and place it over and then I'll loosen up and I'll start to saw. So that's kind of how I like to do it with my hands. You can just wrap it around your fingers however you want. Having leather gloves protects your hands a lot. Now if you don't have leather gloves or if you prefer the handles, you don't need as much string. The string is pretty inexpensive or this OB wire is pretty inexpensive. And so if you're going to use the handles, you have that big slit there and you're going to go ahead and put the wire in between it I missed and then you're going to screw it in perfect so and then you can pull tight and then you can saw with the handle again I don't like the handles a lot of times they slip and uh, I'm not able to use my index fingers to go in and to lock the wire and after you do a lot, you kind of find a rhythm that works for you. And I'll show, let's show you the rhythm that works for me. So again, you can use the handles if you want. We'll put a description where to buy those. Now we're going to go ahead and put Catherine in the restraint chute and get her done. Well, we got the restraint chute, so she can't come forward and, and she can't really go back. So she's not super constrained, just a little bit. And you kind of want to have someone, and I'm not gripping on her head here hard, I'm just kind of holding her chin. And you kind of open up the jaw there. And see, this tooth right here is the one that's been bothering her. So she has one fighting tooth there, the second front one there, and then she has the big one on the bottom right here. So one, two, three, all on one side. Two on the top, and one on the bottom. Now the only one we're going to try to chop off is this bottom one. And this one right here, there's not enough there to do anything. See how it's still above the gum line? And this one, we might be able to get a little bit, but she's had that thing for over 10 years, so we're just gonna leave it. We're just gonna trim this bottom one on the right side here. <laughs> so this is kinda... Doing really. <laughs> All right, so... Can you move that out of the way? It doesn't really matter if that's out of the way or not, okay. but see how I'm not hitting on any gum? Their tongue's not in the way. And so now, I'm just gonna saw back and forth. Boom, tooth's out. Now we'll go ahead and inspect. Again, let's see how he did. 
open her up Kirsten and inspect it. And see how that tooth's gone? We cut right against the gum line there. Easy peasy. All right. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and do the other side and do the tooth on the bottom as well. And Kirsten's going to kind of expose it for us. Mm, or, sorry, it's the top one. Oh, it's the top one? I don't, am I, how do I do that one? Like that? <laughs> I've never done this before. Okay, so I went in there and I did the top one right there. Okay, we got it. And then you always want to put your finger in there and check. You just want to make feel sure it's not too sharp. If it's too sharp, you'll have to get a small little actual nail file and just file the edges if they're too sharp. Now she's done and she can go back out to the pasture. So we ended up just doing two teeth on her, a uh, top one and a bottom one on alternate sides. So she's ready to go. The OB wire did a nice job and cut them pretty smooth. So no real need to file anything on her. But a lot of times when the males are thrashing around and you don't get a good cut, you need to file them and it takes a little bit longer. But once you have a good team of people to help you, um, it really makes a big difference and so we did uh, constrain her we constrained her but we didn't take her outside of the box and when you have to do a llama that um, when you don't have a chute you just kind of really need to have at least a wall using a trailer or a barn wall and you kind of tying them with about a foot lead or less is how you do it when you don't have a restraint chute so sorry we weren't able to show that to you guys today but hopefully you're able to kind of get an idea um, showing people how to trim teeth is really really hard <laughs> we took our best try at it and at least uh, showed you the different what uh, tools and equipment you need and a little bit of how to do it so um, if you have any questions just give us a call I can kind of walk you through a little bit better but uh, hopefully it was uh, good enough to get you guys started so thanks for watching uh, check on the rest of our videos we've got a bunch of them